All right, guys, so today we're here to talk about Ashes of Creation nodes. All right, guys, if you want more daily news for Ashes of Creation, smash that like button and, of course, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on everything that you need to know. Can I be your superhero? All right, let's get right into it. Nodes are areas of the world that can be developed into player-driven centers of commerce and wealth. At launch, there are 103 world node locations, as well as five castles, consisting of three nodes each, totaling 118 total nodes in the world of Vera. There are four node types. We have military, economic, divine, and scientific nodes. You can tell what type of node a node is going to be when the node hits stage one, just by looking at the types of NPCs that spawn with the node. Military nodes will have guards, uh, economic nodes will have merchants, divine nodes will have priests, and scientific nodes will have scholars. The type of node is actually super, super important as it will define the benefits that you can get from advancement. So it is very, very important for you to choose the right kinds of nodes when you'd want to quest or level up or uh, participate in just your own personal growth, because where you decide to chase your personal growth will also dictate uh, where you are applying your presence in a world node advancement. Advancing a node will unlock skill and equipment augments related to the type of node that you choose. In addition, it will also define the election process of how a mayor for that node is chosen. Military nodes specialize in combat, class training, and can build barracks. Economic nodes specialize in trade, merchants, and can build all kinds of things, markets, exchanges, gal uh, gallerias, and emporiums. Divine nodes specialize in faith and skill slash equipment augments, and they can build temples. Scientific nodes, on the other hand, have a, an artisan slash construction specialization focus and can build libraries, colleges, universities, and academies. All right, so the node types are static. They can never change. They are defined uh, when the server launches and it is up to you to decide which of these nodes that you want to develop into larger and larger and larger cities. Now, a super, super interesting element of these is the fact that each of these different node types have a superpower. The military node superpower is a bounty hunt, and this can be unlocked at stage four. This means that a player can choose the path of a bounty hunter, which will unlock a skill called pathfinding, which will reveal corrupted players on the map. And activating this ability will flag the bounty hunter for one hour. Players with a high enough corruption score will actually be shown on the world and the minimap in a zone that has this superpower activated. The accuracy of the map will be determined by the player's actual progression in the bounty hunter system and the better they get the more accurate their map and the more efficient they will be able to hunt down these high corruption players and wipe them out and remove them from your territory now economic nodes oh man every economic nodes unlock the linked economy superpower at stage six this superpower is completely insane. This means that all auction houses can be linked with each stage six economic node connecting up to two other economic stage six nodes. So this means that in a theory, you could have an auction house with listings spanning the entire world of Vera, creating a massive network of trade and wealth with one mega city connected to two other ones which are connected to two other ones, creating a whole loop, looping all of these mega cities together. If they were all economic stage six nodes, you would have a global market. This would create a massive network of trade 
and wealth. And really, it is in the player's hands to determine which of these node types they're going to invest their time into to create the world that that we live in. In it's just absolutely mind blowing the amount of player control and the amount of player influence that that actually exists on this map. From one server to another server, you're going to have a completely different experience based on what the players value and what they decide to invest their time into. Compare that to a world with zero economic nodes and imagine the feeling of connectedness just being severed. <laughs> the, the idea alone just leaves you in awe of the vast impact and importance of player choice. Now, Divine Node superpowers have not been announced yet. I can't wait to see what comes of that one. Now, the scientific superpower is teleportation. This crazy ability is unlocked at stage six and allows your citizens to teleport from the metropolis to any other node under its area of influence and back so long as the node is not at war. As if that wasn't completely insane enough, if there are multiple tier six, like stage six uh, scientific nodes, you will actually get the ability to use king airships to travel between the different metropolises, allowing you to cross the entire world with global fast travel. <laughs> what? Oh my god, it is so amazing. As players quest, gather, and raid within that node, the, the node will grow and level up, expanding that node's zone of influence. As that zone of influence grows, it will grow to encompass other nodes around it, enslaving those nodes and turning them into vassal nodes that will in turn fuel the XP gain to level up the parent node. And it will continue to grow and continue to consume and enslave. All of the vassal nodes will then, they will only ever be able to achieve one stage below the parent node. And the parent node will continue to feed off of that, uh, off of all of the experience gained in all of those areas, leveling up to a maximum of stage six, where it will become a mighty massive metropolis. Now the metropolises are so vast and so massive and their area of influence is so great that it will encompass one fifth of the entire world. Only five metropolises can exist on a world at any given time. The sheer enormity of these colossal, colossal cities is just mind blowing. And as you level up all of these nodes, the enemies and the quests and the rewards get greater and greater and greater within these areas. The individual nodes don't really have monster levels per se. When you are traveling along a road, you're going to find the lowest level enemies uh, that you can find. And as you venture further into the wilderness and into the mountains, you're going to find greater and greater threats, higher level enemies, greater challenges, that will challenge even the most experienced of players so they always have to stay on their toes and be aware and be ready to or run. So no matter what node you're in, no matter what zone you're in, you're not really isolated into low level and high level zones. Every single node, every zone has a full range of monster levels in it depending on how far you stray from the common areas, the roads, and then spreading out into the wilderness. So the you have this very, very fascinating feel of interconnectedness. And of course, the lower the level the nodes, you might find yourself being, you know, gravitating towards lower level areas, nodes that have not been developed if you want to fight against weaker enemies, and then traveling closer to tropolises as you want to fight stronger and stronger enemies. Uh, the greatest threats bring the greatest rewards and the area that is, you know, has the greatest concentration of players uh, fighting uh, that and, and leveling and questing is where you're going to find these massive stage six metropolises, which in turn will allow you access to the highest level enemies and content and loot and treasures. Now, all of these, these nodes require activity in order to exist or they will atrophy if there is not enough players questing or participating in a certain area these nodes can and will down level and the the nodes that 
you know, receive all the attention and all the player activity are the ones that will level up. So mayors can actually offer quest rewards from their tax contributions to actually give quests and rewards to non-citizens to encourage people to come there and to quest in order to keep these nodes leveled up. So you have this economic push and pull of you know, mayors wanting to take care of their cities and nurture the cities, grow their cities as much as possible, and to give incentive to have people come into those zones to participate, to meet the requirements, to have that city stay leveled or keep that city growing. Now, at any time, if players decide that they hate a city and they no longer are satisfied with that city controlling the area, and dictating the you know the vassals and um, everything. If they if they want that city gone, they are tired. People become unsettled. They want change. Players can take part in a city siege, and this is insane. The cities have a massive defensive advantage, uh, making it very very difficult for this to ever seed. But if enough players band together and decide that they've had enough and they want to change the world, they can destroy a city in a city siege, completely annihilating even a metropolis down to instantaneously to stage zero. From stage six to stage zero, they can wipe a city off the face of the earth and start fresh, start leveling up a completely different node and reshaping the entire world of players ultimate control it is a fascinating system push and pull and growth and incentive and you guys i hope you're prepared because it is an absolute blast and you guys are going to be shaping the world you are a part of <laughs> oh man so freaking cool all right guys i really hope you enjoyed this breakdown of the node system i hope it gets you hyped and I hope you can't wait. I hope you can't wait to shape the world and to organize with your friends and take part in this incredible, incredible world social experiment. It is gonna be fascinating to see how your world shapes compared to someone else's. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching these videos and helping this geek grow and supporting this wonderful game. I would love to see you guys come and join the core. If you would like to come and be a part of Team Vash, I would like you guys to come. Come to our Discord channel, participate in our guild application, and we will find a place for you in our mighty, mighty team of <laughs> ultra-addicted gamers, man. We are out here on Twitch all day, every day, playing all kinds of games. If you want to become part of the core, I would love to have you join this wonderful community. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one. Oh yeah. <laughs>